Hello and welcome to a brand new YouTube video. This YouTube video is kind of an important one um, and it's an interesting one because I want to talk about safety plans. Now a safety plan is designed to keep you safe. It's designed that when you are feeling down and when you start to feel down you be, you've got like a plan in place. Now this plan will not always work. That is absolutely fine. Again, I'm, not, I'm never going to make judgment if this plan doesn't work for you or your plan that you create doesn't work for you. Now, I think that's really important to start with. But it's got several layers, and if you go online, you'll be able to find one, a uh, really good safety plan. You'll be able to find one that you, you can really get behind. Um, it's to prevent you getting to your crisis point. So things that you can do to make you feel better. Um, you want it written down, and you want it the details kept somewhere near you. Um, but you can download one off the internet, and there's some really cute ones as well if you want it to look really cute and pretty. Um, the one that I really like, um, it it has this section, which I've seen a few of them without this section, and I think this section is really important. Because when you are feeling down, what you really need to figure out is why you want to live. Why, when you was in a better mood, when you was in a better mental well-being space, why did you want to survive? So, your reasons for living. This can be uh, that, like, um, I care enough about myself, my friends, my family, my beliefs, my hopes. So, uh, I am studying to become a doctor and I'm going to help people. For example, that could be like one of your reasons for living. List as many of these reasons as possible because, tell you what, when you come back and you look at those and you're feeling a little down, that might really, really help you. And then you've got to think about making your situation safer as it is. Now, not only here, but like as you feel yourself needing it, can you get rid of all? Or uh, can you can you contact someone? And can they get rid of all your pills that are in your house? So, for example, if you're on tablets um, from the doctor, um, razor blades, anything like that, any risk factors, anything that you can do to keep yourself safe if you drop that little bit further. Um, you obviously are act, probably going to be acting impulsively at the time and you're not going to be acting in a logical mindset so it is quite difficult with this step however it is very very important to go through that you've got to, to recognize your warning signs what warning signs do you have um, this is like your third section is like looking at warning signs. So what warning signs do you have? Your thought processes, for example, maybe you're taking more risks, maybe you're ignoring your animals, maybe um, you have become recluse from your friends and you're, and you're not talking to your friends as much. So note down all like the warning systems. This, this is where it's really good to get like your friends input as well. So talk to your friends about um, when they've seen you go down these rabbit holes because they might be able to put, spot some warning systems that you don't really realize that you had. And I think that's really deeply important is that you've got to be able to spot things. And some things, like, like anniversaries, October's really bad for me, which I've gone into. Um, the fourth section um, of the one that I was looking at, and I think is a really good section, is identifying ways that you might be able to lift your mood. Exercise, walking, dealing with a dog, uh, dealing with your cat, being creative, producing something, ch chilling out, playing video games, play video games with your friends, see somebody, uh, go see some historic site or go and see something that you really want to go and see. Give it for a reason. Give yourself a, a proper reason to want to go and do something. This might even be going to a church, even if you're not religious, because you know what? It's sometimes going to a quiet place where you can't harm yourself as easily. Um, you've got that protection, even if you're not religious, for example. There you go, counts for museums and places like that as well. But that's like a really key part in my my opinion where you've got to start working on that and try to figure out where you can go that's safe where can you walk to that's perfectly safe uh it might just be a pub i know drinking isn't great but if you're drinking with people and you're talking to the bartender it might just get you through that slump a little bit um you just got to be careful when you're going home uh, and you and you're back on your own to have that little protection barrier so maybe you get you decide you'll go to the pub and speak to the bartender and talk to them and chill out 
bugbear for a few hours, but you text your friend saying how you're feeling so they can have time to prepare and come round and so you so so that they don't have to be there straight away. You can be like, oh, I tell you what, I'm going to go to the pub. So I'm round people. Um, this will be this is our safety plan. Um, and also make sure you've shared all your safety plan with them as well. Um, now the next bit is these people. Who are your support network? Who is part of this support network that you have? Do you? Is it your mom? Is it your dad? Is it your boyfriend, girlfriend? Um, so you're informal. Uh, they're more informal. So like, and then obviously you also have like your Samaritans can get their phone number on there and any phone number that's valid to your country that you are currently living in because there, there there's a. I, I can't list like Australia's, America's, the UK, because there is so many of them. But I tell you what, if you can get some of those numbers ripped down so that you've got somewhere to protect yourself and to enjoy, uh, not to enjoy, uh, as per se, but to kind of uh, be able to go back to. So you've got this ripped down and then you go, right, I've got that phone number if I need it. Um, this advice is three. I would say at least, yeah, three people um, from colleagues that you work with to your friends your family and obviously you also want your emergency numbers down there um your local crisis team is also a fantastic number to have uh, but you may have to ask your doctor to, to find that one out uh, you might be able to find out online as well um obviously the uh, what we was just talking about in this part six is also distractions so things that can distract you uh, f uh so minute by minute so things that like breathing exercise games on your phone watching a film watching tv very similar to um uh, like plans to take you um like things that might lift your mood but this is just looking at it as a distraction point of view and not anything else so this is looking at um, how you can distract yourself, whereas previously we was looking at um, maybe coping mechanisms to last a longer period of time. This may only last 10, 15 minutes, uh, but that distraction may be just enough to get you over the worst of your slump uh, and your mental well-being. And I think that's really important uh, that you've got, you can go there and you can figure the, these little bits and pieces out. Obviously, uh, then at part seven, it does mention um, um, getting professional help. And that's obviously because we've already stored your numbers for your Samaritans and all your all your companies like that. Uh, obviously, your GP, NHS uh, as well um, are a good number to have. But as I say, you'll find one of these online and these are really, really good. Um, if you know anyone who suffers with low mood or anything like that, it's worth talking to them about have they got a crisis plan? Um, and if so, can you see it? Can you can you look at it? Can you work with them with it? Can uh, if they need you, uh, you can put my phone number down, for example. You can just be like that to them. So they've got an extra phone number there. They might not have thought about contacting you, but it just shows that you're willing to be a contact if you are the third person in this, obviously. Obviously, if you are in immediate danger, 999 or go to the hospital A&E. &E. Um, and obviously, if you dif discover somebody who has self-harmed or um, to the point of um, needing the hospital, it is 999 straight away. There is plenty of things that um, you can do and there's plenty of things uh, about how we can help people. And I think the, the key point here is um, looking at these safety plans and just trying to uh, help people go through them i mean even if you just make even if your mental well-being isn't that low right now but maybe you gotta understand 25 percent is 25 percent of people i think we were talking about before of people will suffer with mental health uh and well-being issues this year why shouldn't you even if you think you are perfectly fine now why shouldn't you have one? They um, Even if it's just getting practice. So when your friend or your family member who needs to have one or you can talk about and you can be like, oh, I've got one. Even if like your mental health and well-being is not that bad. I've got one of these wellness plans because I tell you what, it's a good thing to hold. And that might encourage more people to get one and might help save a life. And that's all that's important. So anyway, guys, that's 
basically as quickly as I possibly could do uh, a information about this. I honestly think it's really, really important that you should have a safety plan um, and safety and wellness plan because tell you what, you never know when you're going to need it. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening. I hope you have enjoyed it. Stay safe and stay well. And I hope you have a fantastic evening. Goodbye. <laughs>